How would you define imposter syndrome? I would flip it round and say, if you don't have imposter syndrome, you've got a problem. Honestly. And I can only speak from my experience, so I've got a certain personality type. Everyone will have lots of different types of um, characteristics and traits generally. But I've always found um, being on the cusp of feeling like a fraud is usually very useful. It feels incredibly uncomfortable most of the time. Everyone feels, you know, you, you, you learn your most when you're outside of your comfort zone and everything like that. Agreed, to a degree. You don't want to be too far outside it. Um, but for me, it's been a very useful, um, uh, I, I guess, fuel to a degree. Um, and the fuel has been, I feel a little bit out of my depth and I need to know more. So how do I know more? I either have a fixed mindset and go, I'm never gonna know more about this, so I'm gonna constantly be feeling out of my depth. Or I'm gonna to turn to the people that know more about it than me, or consume more content from people that will know more about me, know, know more about it than me, so I can become and feel more comfortable about being less of an imposter and feel, for, feel more comfortable about the insecurity that you'll constantly feel. The actual irony about it is, is that when you then do the next thing, <laughs> and then you go up the level or the layer or whatever. It just hits you again in truth. But that is the sign of empathy. That's the sign that you've had enough self-reflection to be like, that's okay, but that's the fuel again in order to drive you to do the next thing, to feel more empowered, to gain more knowledge, to connect more dots. And the truth is, is that on the cusp of imposter syndrome, I actually think comes creativity. I, 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 oh, if you don't mind story. me saying, I've, I, I've, I've seen you three times kind of have that feeling. One was your move from previous firm to this firm where yeah. you felt you were out of your depth. Um, second was when you started getting on Sky Sports a lot and you were really kind of like, I <laughs> don't, know about this. don't know about this. And then when you started thinking about writing a book, mm. it was probably the, not that you had a wobble, but you were like, who's really going to want to read my stuff? And the answer was quite a lot of no people, one. right? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> quite a lot of people did. Well, it was that, uh, I told you about it, it was, um, I was about to go on BBC on six o'clock news, uh, whenever it was, uh, quite a while back before COVID now. And, uh, and, it, and, and the person said possibly the worst thing to me ever before we went on. Uh, and he was, mainly, he was meaning it jokingly, but it was like, congratulations, there's only 20 million people watching. <laughs> As a joke, I was like, oh, that's really what I, really what I needed right now. So, so, so thank you. But the other imposter syndrome bit, just very briefly as a story Please. from the book. Um, is this the is, throwing coach? Yeah, the throwing coach. Brilliant. So there's um, uh, a coach who uh, has just left Liverpool, but is with a lot of other elite football clubs called Thomas Gronemark. And I interviewed him for the book on talking about a variety of different things. He actually talked about imposter syndrome in a fascinating way. Um, he was a teacher, um, was a bobsleigh in the bobsleigh, uh, the Danish bobsleigh team, did loads of different things. Saw a gap in the market for um, teams uh, who weren't very good at keeping the ball from throw-ins in football matches and they're not exploiting particular positions to the club's ad a team's advantage. Um, couldn't get a job explaining why throw-ins were very important. Managed to um, convince a club in Denmark to do it for free for a while. It then turns out uh, he worked with another team. He managed to um, train one player to increase their throw-in length by threefold. So suddenly this uh, German player, I think, becomes one of the longest throw-in um, record holders in the whole of world football. He transfers to another club. Um, and this is the power of opportunity and networks and everything else that comes with it. He tweets the guy um, saying, congratulations on your move, multi-million pound move to another club. It then gets picked up by a local German newspaper and then build the, the national German newspaper, pick it up 10 million, 50 million circulation every day. Guess who reads it on the beach when he's in uh, Tenerife, Jurgen Klopp. Um, and so this is when the story, it hasn't been very exciting so far, gets a little bit more exciting. Um, so he's, uh, Thomas is, is driving for his uh, summer holiday somewhere in France and he's with his family, he's had a really busy season, his phone hasn't stopped, all he wants to do is have a little bit of a break for a few weeks. And uh, the phone, his phone rings 
and his wife's about to pick it up and it's some random English number. He's like, we're not picking it up, I need a break for a few days, all the rest of it. Doesn't pick up, goes to voicemail. They don't think anything of it. And then about three hours later, his wife says, well, do you not want to know what it was? He's like, no, it's okay. And he goes, well, you know what, we'll just listen to it. He thought one of his friends was pulling a prank because it was like, hi, this is Jürgen from Liverpool. Can you, can you give me a ring? <laughs> So he rings back, no one answers. So he's thinking, I've lost the opportunity of a lifetime to speak to Jurgen Klopp, if it's Jurgen Klopp. Anyway, cut a long story short, he speaks to him, cuts his holiday short, goes back to Melwood. He thinks he's just gonna have a five minute chat with Jurgen, um, ends up uh, having a chat with him for an hour. And Jurgen says, well, they're back in pre-season now. Do you wanna have a go at training Salah, Trent, Robertson and Henderson on throw-ins because we've got a spare half an hour. And Thomas is like, wait, a week and a half ago, I was on holiday with my wife not picking up your, your phone call. Anyway, fast forward two years, Liverpool have won the Champions League, the, uh, a lot of the cups and the, and the Premier League for the first time in 30 years. And Jürgen puts a lot of it down to the work that Thomas effectively did, all from one tweet. And the, and the imposter syndrome was, well, no one will ever want me because what do I know? Until I actually get validated by, yeah. you know, the, the world leading football club, one of the world leading football clubs, and it being a good outcome in the end. So that's um, excellent. Yeah. Really good.